Some recent comments by Florida Congressman Byron Donalds have been condemned by House Minority Leader Kareem Jeffrey, Hakeem Jeffries. The stuff that comes up about Jim Crow and twisting my words, saying I was being nostalgic or saying that Jim Crow was good for black people, that's all political spin. It's a lie. It's gaslighting. And that's truly unfortunate. No, all I was no, talking no. about on. was the marriage stop, rates. Stop. No, nope, that's not what you said. Let's play what you said. Play what he said. Play what he said. Family. It's my show. Now I'm going to talk. Do I have a chance? Good. Now, you talked sure, about the black that's father. Fine. Hey, fam. Welcome and welcome back to One and Done. Well, cultural appropriator Joy Reid, that mega wig wearing lover, has got my blood boiling. For the simple fact that Byron Donalds believes a father in the home helps children. He should be there to provide and protect. And he simply stated that marriage rates during Jim Crow were higher than what they are today. Now, for some reason, cultural appropriator, DTS, Donald Trump hater, race baiter, Joy Reid has a problem with that. Even though she's married, she has a man in the home. Well, technically speaking. So before we dive into this, folks, don't forget to hit the like, smash the subscribe, ring the notification bell, and let's roll that tape. Some recent comments by Florida Congressman Byron Donalds have been condemned by House Minority Leader Kareem Jeffrey, Hakeem Jeffries, the Congressional Black Caucus, Karen the chairman Jeffries. of the Democratic National Committee, Jamie Harrison, and the president of the NAACP, Derek Johnson, just to name a few. In those comments, at an event designed to help Republican outreach to black voters in Philadelphia early this week, Congressman Donalds made what certainly seem like positive comments about the Jim Crow era, and he claims his critics are missing the context of what he said. So here's the context. I grew up with my mom. My dad and my mom, things didn't work out. As an adult, I look at my father and I say, bro, I don't know what happened. Well, you my father and I love you. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Wow. But I'm going to tell you this. Coming growing up, the one thing I knew I wanted to do, and this is not about my father, this is about what I wanted to do, is I wanted to be a father to yeah. myself. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so one of the things that's actually happening in our culture, which you're now starting to see in our politics, is the, re in, the reinvigoration <laughs> of black families with younger black men and black women. And that is also helping to breed the revival of a black middle class in America. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, because black people always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then H.E. W. Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. What's happened in America the last 10 years, and I say this, my contemporaries as well as contemporaries, you're starting to see more black people be married in homes, raising kids. It's when you're home with your wife raising your kids, and then you look at the world, you're saying, oh, wait a minute, it's not my this does not look right. Yeah, right. How can I get something to my kids? It goes back to the conversation of generational wealth. Not just having a job. Generational wealth. Now, this is what upsets me about the left. Why on earth are they taking issue with this? He is preaching responsibility and unity. And the results of that are much better than if you are separated. If you are being raised by, say, just your mom, the statistics are horrific compared to if you're raised by both or a single dad. Now, he alluded to the Great Society Act, which came in and basically said, hey, here's some money, but just make sure your father's or your husband's not in the home, because if he comes back home, you ain't going to be getting any checks anymore. And this is the problem with governments. They don't make good parents. Now, it doesn't just happen in America. It didn't just happen with black communities. It happens in the West because that policy was basically replicated in the West, and it has disproportionately affected minority groups. Handing out checks just incentivized that behavior, the behavior of single mums. Now, Byron Donalds was raised by a single mum, and there are great single mums out there. This isn't a hit job on single mums. I criticize the government for these policies. They're not incentivizing families. And we know for a fact that doesn't matter if you're black or white, if you have two parents in the home, the disparity of crime rates between both are almost non-existent. Unfortunately today, 
in the black community, it has a marriage rate or two parents in the home of around about 25%. Now for whites, that's around about 50%. Kids deserve a mother and father. They deserve that balance and that foundation in their lives. And why these networks have an issue with that tells me that they don't care. They don't care about the next generation. That's why they keep doing hit pieces on this guy, Byron Donalds, who's an absolute boss. And I can see him as VP. He's a great example, a great role model from what I can tell and what I see. He holds himself very well and he comes from a genuine place and he doesn't back down. I am joined now by Florida Republican Congressman Byron Donalds. Congressman, thank you for being here. Um, we played that lengthy segment. That is what you posted on your social media. The part of uh, what you said that people take issue with is this line, which I'm going to read back to you again. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative. Black people have always been conservative minded, but black people voted conservatively. Um, but it is that during Jim Crow, the black family was together. That's what people have taken issue with take an issue with what are they missing uh frankly what's really happened is is that you have uh you know democrats and you have the biden campaign and some of the media want to twist my words for political purposes the overarching issue is talking just about black families and why you're seeing a trend of black people leaning towards Republicans in this election cycle and probably in election cycles to, to come. And part of that, in part, is that when you're raising families, raising kids, et cetera, you're now thinking about all of the public policy issues, all of the economic issues, all of the education issues. And that's leading people to have divergence in political thoughts. That was the only point. The stuff that comes up about Jim Crow and twisting my words, saying I was being nostalgic or saying that Jim Crow was good for black people, that's all political spin. It's a lie. It's gaslighting. And that's truly unfortunate. So here's the challenge, Congressman. You started out talking about your family, talking about your mom, talking about being raised, and you on your own brought up Jim Crow. In fact, you said Jim Crow three times for emphasis. It wasn't the media or the Democrats or gaslighters who brought up Jim Crow. It was you. You brought up Jim Crow. So who cares? Stop word policing. This woman is the biggest hypocrite race baiter, America hater, cultural appropriator, more evil than Darth Vader. Why the hell is she still on the air? What makes her the, the word police? Who gave her that right? If he wants to talk about Jim Crow, who cares? His point was that marriage rates were higher under Jim Crow. That's a fact. You can't dispute that. And I've got a feeling Byron Donalds is about to blow that wig off. Why did you use Jim Crow specifically as your reference? You did that. No one else did that. You did it. Oh, I did. We were having a conversation just talking as, you know, black people in Philadelphia. But if you're going to use the, 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 the chronological timeline of America before the Great Society and Lyndon Johnson's uh, mm -hmm. time period, you had, unfortunately, the Jim Crow era in America. During that time period, the marriage rates of black Americans was significantly higher than any other time since then in American history. So it is a divergence if you're talking about marriage rates in the black community. They have plummeted. And what we've seen recently in America, which is a very good thing we should all celebrate, is that the marriage rates in the black community are rising again. That's good for black families. That's definitely good for black children. It's something I want to see. I'm quite sure you want to see it as well. Uh, no, I don't think she does because this woman is a hater. She suffers from TDS, yet she has Donald Trump's mop on her head. OK, let's talk about that. Uh, Jim Crow uh, lasted roughly from 1867 after the Civil War to 1968. Is there a specific period between 1867 and 1968 that you thought was this golden era for black families or a time that was good for black families? Joy, I never said that. And see, this is where the gaslighting comes in. No, no, I'm going to read in. what you said. All no, 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 no. Hold on. Stop. Stop. Nope, Joy, that's not what you said. Let's play what you said. Play what he said. Play what he said. Play what he said. Families. You're play saying what I said. said it was the golden era. I'm going to play what he said. You're saying I said that it was better for black families. I never said that. Play what he said. Play what I said. Play what he said. During Jim Crow, the black family was together. 
That's right. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, because black people are always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. Facts. And then HEW, Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. Facts. Okay, so now I want to go back. You said during Jim Crow, the black family was together. What was the authority of the black father in the black family during Jim Crow? Well, listen, under Jim Crow, obviously, black people were under great persecution, unfortunately, by Southern Democrats and the Democrat Party overall so what in the was, history of our country. That's the fact. And so well, let me finish now, Joy. And so having the black man in the home was about first protecting the, the mom and protecting the kids. Incredibly important. It was the leadership in the home which is incredibly valuable. And I think what we're witnessing, obviously the last 30 years, definitely through my generation, is black fathers being at home is incredibly important for the success of black children going forward. And it's not just a black thing, that's everybody. Fathers in home help to breed success for kids moving forward. That is that is a great thing for our country. That's something that should just has been proven throughout time. Exactly, and there's no coincidence that Asians, Indians, Sri Lankans, Africans, who all have high marriage rates succeed in America and the outcomes of their offspring is much better. Just facts. So what I'm talking about is not the golden era of Jim Crow. That's ridiculous. I would never say that. And that is the gaslighting that I'm standing up to because that's what Hakeem Jeffries, the Biden campaign, Jamie Harrison and the like are trying to be up, uh, trying to bring up. And unfortunately, the media has followed suit with misleading headlines. And that's wrong. Now I'm going to talk. Do I have a chance? Good. Now, you talked sure, about the black That's father me. being the black father being in the family, being able to protect the family. First, I want to read just for our audience the history. I mean, the definition of Jim Crow, just so we all know what we're talking about. Jim Crow laws were a collection of state and local statutes that legalized racial segregation. Uh, they existed essentially from the post-Civil War era. They were meant to marginalize African-Americans by denying them the right to vote hold jobs, get an education and other job opportunity and other opportunities. Those who attempted to defy Jim Crow laws often faced arrest, fines, jail sentences, violence and death. Now I want to talk about something that happened during this era. You said that what you were talking about was the presence of the black father in the home to protect his wife and family. Joy thinks her audience are a bunch of dummies. No one's saying that Jim Crow was good, good for anybody. And Byron Donald state of facts. They can't be disputed. In 1943, in the state that you represent in Florida, a young man named Willie James Howard, who was 15 years old, was lynched. During Christmas of 1943, Willie Howard sent cards to all of his co-workers at the Van Priest Dime Store in Live Oak, Florida. Unlike the other cards, Willie's card to Cynthia Goff, a white store employee, revealed a youthful crush. His greeting expressed hope that white people would someday like black people and concluded, I love your name, I love your voice. For SH, sweetheart, you are my choice. After reading the card, Cynthia's father, Phil Goff, brought two friends to the Howard home and demanded to see Willie. Despite his mother's pleading, the men dragged Willie away and then kidnapped Willie's father, James Howard, from work. The men drove the two Howard men, to the two Howards, I should say, to the embankment of the Suwannee River, bound Willie's hands and feet, stood him at the edge of the water and told him to either jump or be shot. Willie jumped into the cold water below and drowned while his father was forced to watch at gunpoint. Willie's dead body was pulled from the river the next day. You said that the that during the Jim Crow era, the importance of having a black man in the home was to protect his family and to protect his wife. Oh, uh, now this is just straight up stupid. No one's saying at all that that isn't horrific and bad. Those people are evil, pure evil. Byron Donalds was talking about marriage and fathers in the home and having a father in the home should be there to protect his family. And I'm sure that father was attempting to protect his family. This is just a stupid, pathetic argument. Let me know in the comments. Is this woman delusional? Is she crazy or she's just straight up evil? Um, I actually spoke with somebody who lived through Jim Crow. Uh, her name is Merle Evers Williams. And Merle quoted to me a man named Charles Silberman, who wrote in, um, the cri in Crisis in Black and White, um, that in 1890, the year that the, the uh, Mississippi Constitution was written, the policy of crushing out the manhood of the Negro citizens was to be carried out with success. So the man in the home during Jim Crow had no rights, could not protect his wife from rape, could not protect his son from lynching. So again, 
Why would you quote that era and say that, the, that the, at that time, the family all being in the home together was something we should think of as a good thing? Well, first of all, Joy, the story you bring up and your and you're bringing up is a tragedy. One of the great tragedies of the Jim Crow era. I'm uh, this is why, why you those policies were era. told this space. They were disgusting and distasteful. All so I was that talking era, about Joy what was, was the, the benefit of a man in the, in the family. family. Again, sir, I'm sorry, Joy, I let you talk for a long time. Sorry, I only no 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 talk over you. You've gotten a chance I'm to speak a lot, Congressman. You're gonna answer my question now and not filibuster. Let no this is the question you want. This is the question you need to answer. That's what I'm trying to answer. Black men. That's Hold what I'm on. trying to answer, Joy. Give me a second. Take a breath. Take a breath. If a black it. man could not protect... Byron, I'm going to let you take a breath because I, I, I'm i protecting you from this crazy woman. So he is ludicrous. He is answering the question. Is this an interview or what? It's my show. If a black man, a black father, could not protect his wife, his son, or himself from lynching and violence, how is him being in the home mean that that is an era that was better for the black family or that the, or that we should think of as a good thing. First, first of all, Joy, I never said that it was better for black people in Jim Crow. I have never said that. And even my own words say that if you're talking about the importance of black fathers in the home or frankly, all fathers in the home, it is always for the betterment of children to have leadership. Yes, for safety. So having two people in the home to help provide the economic needs for those children so the family can succeed. That is a wonderful thing. We should always get back to that, not to Jim Crow. And this is the point of the gaslighting and the lying that is occurring with what I said. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. try to impose the fact that the marriage rates were better in the uh, higher, higher, I want to be clear, higher in the Jim Crow era to mean that I think Jim Crow is great. That is a lie. That is gaslighting. I would never say such a thing. Which is why you the, the Jim, Crow Jim Crow era you was brought destructive it up. of black people. You brought it up. You're the All one who brought it up. About. So there we have it, folks. Thankfully, that interview ended. There we have it. Joy Reid, that MAGA wig wearing, love Donald Trump wig wearing, DTS, Numpty, is delusional. And she spews pure evil. She's racist. And it looks like she hates men in marriage, even though she's married. Heavens forbid. And this is the joke. Because all of these people, all of these race baiters, they're all married, educated, and the last thing they want to promote is marriage and education. I can't wait to see your comments. This woman is so disingenuous. She gaslit this whole interview. Byron Donalds is on point. He was spitting facts, and she's trying to hurt everybody's feelings. Jim Crow was bad. The people involved in that example she brought up are pure evil. Yes, the father was in the house. Would that young boy's fate been better off if he wasn't in the house? That just doesn't make sense. It's just not logically sound. Just like Joy Reid. All right, I need to take a break. But before we do, folks, don't forget to hit the like, smash the subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I will definitely catch you in the next video.